I thought DJI was done with announcements for the rest of the year, but here we are in November and they're announcing their latest drone. It's the DJI Mini 2, the follow-up successor to last year's Mavic Mini, which got a lot of attention because it was at 249 grams. You didn't need to register it with the FAA. So it's very similar in that way where it's lightweight, but now it has some upgraded hardware that makes it a lot more attractive, especially for enthusiasts. But before I get into the nitty gritty about the drone, I just wanna remind you guys to give a thumbs up to this video if you like it at the end, and also a reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. All right, now that's out of the way, I wanna tell you guys the five best new features of the Mini 2 before I go into greater detail. So quickly list them off here. Number one being the 4K video recording. Number two, OcuSync 2.0 transmission technology. Number three, the better stability you're getting with the drone. Number four, the 249 gram weight limit. And the last piece is the price. So yeah, a lot of people are gonna be excited that 4K video recording is here with the Mini 2. I think a lot of people wanted that with the original Mini, but it only topped out at 2.7K resolution at 30 frames per second. DJI is using the same sensor here as before, but now it's increased to 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. You have also options for 24 and 25 if you want. But more importantly, they also increased the bit rate for the recording. It's at 100 megabits per second versus 30 megabits per second from before. So with that, you can get a little bit more information from your footage. Now, if you do want a faster frame rate, you could drop it down to 1080p. You have pretty much the gamut from 60 frames per second all the way down to 24 frames per second. The only thing you're missing out here if you flew the DJI Mavic Air 2 is that you're not going to get things like the HDR mode, the video HDR, and also some of these super slow motion speeds. But I think for a lot of people, this is going to give them the extra flexibility in post to either punch in, crop, or do whatever, but at least you get that full 4K resolution. The second big feature here with the Mini 2 is OcuSync 2.0 transmission technology. Now, if you've used the Mavic Air 2 like I have, you'll really appreciate this feature because with OcuSync 2.0, it just provides for more reliable transmission from the controller to the drone. When I've used the Mavic Mini before, every now and then I would see the video feed glitch out or have some sort of interference. So far in using the Mini 2, I haven't seen too much of that, which is great. And theoretically, it could go up to a range of 10 kilometers because of this OcuSync 2.0 transmission technology. So in that way, you're gonna have improved connectivity between the drone and the controller. And when it comes to controlling the drone too, it's key because you want that responsiveness. You wanna be able to see the video feed in real time and not have to worry about any latency issues. One of the biggest challenges with drones in general is that the lighter you are, the tougher it is for you to stay stabilized, especially in windy conditions. But DJI said that they improved the motors here with the Mini 2. So now it has a wind resistance of level five, meaning that it'll withstand windy conditions between 19 miles per hour and 23 and a half miles per hour. And honestly, in my first day of actually flying the Mini 2, I was kind of surprised that it handled the windy conditions. And I try to refrain from flying when it's really windy out because you never know what's gonna happen. With something this light, I am always scared that it's gonna struggle as far as coming back to me because it's flying against the wind. But luckily, I did fly it over the river and it seemed to handle it fine. And when it's kind of hovered or tried to stay still, you could see a little bit movement, but for the most part, it was handling the wind very well. The footage from the gimbal was also super stable. You didn't see any jitters or anything like that. So, so far it's great, but I would still caution you guys to not fly it when it's really gusty out, unless you're a pro. When you consider the new hardware they put in into the Mini 2 to give it the 4K video recording, the OcuSync 2.0 technology, and also the improved motors, you would think there would be a compromise somewhere, whether it's in the battery life of the drone or perhaps the weight. But you know what? There's none of that. It's still 249 grams, which is kind of crazy because with that, just about anyone could buy the Mini 2 and start flying it. You don't need to register it with the FAA. And to me, that's 
good to know because for a lot of people who just want to pick up a drone, start flying for the first time, it just makes for an easier transition. On top of that, the battery life is exceptional. 31 minutes per charge uh, with the battery. So that's pretty long. And when you consider the size of the unit, it's compact, travel friendly, doesn't weigh a whole lot. And it's probably the best drone you could find as far as a travel companion. And the last thing I want to talk about here is the price. So the DJI Mini 2 starts at $450. That's a $50 increase versus the original Mavic Mini. But the differences are again, the 4K video recording, the OcuSync 2.0 technology, and the improved motors with the unit itself. It still has the same design and weight, which is amazing. But if you are to ask me, I'd probably recommend going with the Fly More combo, which is at $600. And with that, you're getting a lot of extra goodies. And I think it's a better value and also better than last year's Fly More combo because now you get a better bag that for carrying and traveling. You get the three extra batteries and it also comes with a useful uh, propeller guard. So it just wraps the entire thing so you don't have to worry about the propellers getting the weight as you're taking it in and out of the bag. So $450 starting is a great price point. It's not terribly expensive, but you're still getting a fantastic drone. And those are the five best new features of the DJI Mini 2. I still think it's a fantastic upgrade versus last year's unit. The price is definitely worth it. Some of the areas that where it struggles is low light performance. It's still not the best, but you have 4K video recording at 100 megabits per second. So you get more information and you just have a little bit more to work around with. And of course, as far as the other drones in DJI's portfolio, I still feel as though the Mavic Air 2 is still the all arounder because Yes, it has better performance, larger sensor, more features, but largely for the fact that you have those obstacle avoidance sensors. So you could have the drone fly autonomously and not worry about it hitting something else. With the Mini 2, you still have none of those sensors on board. So you have to be cognizant of where you're flying so you don't hit something and you need to have line in sight as far as flying the drone. And that is it for this video, guys. If you want to learn more about the DJI Mini 2 or anything else I talked about in this video, you can check out our website, digitaltrends.com. I'm John Velasco, and I'll see you in the next video.